Brian Dulesky with Able Distributors. I've done a video on testing external static pressure. The link is going to be below. You should check it out. So again, external static pressure tests everything from the furnace out. So it tests the filter and all the return drop, the duct, everything, and everything from the furnace top up. So it tests the A-coil, plenum, all the duct work, all the vents. So what can affect external static pressure? Everything whether the vents are closed, the duct works too small, the filter's too dense. But I had a call the other day from a contractor that told me my video lied on testing static pressure because he had low static pressure and low static pressure when he tested. And when he tested, he put a probe into the blower compartment, into the heat exchanger compartment, just like he should. So it baffled me for a minute. So I had to ask him, I said, okay, there's a couple things when we check external static pressure, we're not checking anything internal. So we're checking how much suction pressure this blower is getting if it's restricted. So it'll be like trying to suck a golf ball through a garden hose. It's, it, that's the pressure we're measuring down there. <clears throat> and up here, we're measuring stacking up air where it's trying to force air and it's packing the air in there and it's, it's an outward type of pressure. Those two added up it gives us our external static pressure. But there are things inside a furnace that can affect how your readings go. And you're not going to pick them up. It's not going to tell you what to look for or what to do with it. So he had a low static down here. So while I was on the phone with him, I said, you know what? I said, let me ask you two questions. Is it a 90% furnace? He said, yes. I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to slide the blower out. I want you to crawl on your back, look up at the secondary heat exchanger. You know that's very closely spaced fins, almost like a car radiator. So I want you to look at that because if a homeowner changes their filter with the fan running, sometimes in the drop, you'll get big dust bunnies, little pieces of things, sometimes even dust bunnies stuck to the filter. And as you slide that out, they either roll off the filter go through the blower and get stuck right there or as you slide it out something in the, stuck in the bottom of the drop <clears throat> with the free flowing air will get sucked in sent through the blower and stuck in the bottom of the secondary heat exchanger when that heat exchanger gets plugged up this blower has no place to blow air so now it's not moving air it's not causing the same suction pressure so your your pressure your static on the lower end is going to be lower now, if you're not moving air through this furnace, your static pressure up here is gonna be lower. So there are things that will affect your static pressure that are built into the furnace. So he called me back like two hours later. <clears throat> He's like, you nailed it. I slid out the blower, I, I went in there. It was completely covered with dog hair and, and, and dust and dirt. Cleaned it, everything was fine. Another way that you could have your external static pressure seem to be low but still have airflow problems is your blower wheel. So every single one of these fins is cupped. So I've been on a lot of jobs and typically it's when somebody runs it with a packed filter and it's allowing dirt and dust to run by. A bypass humidifier gets everything a little moist. They're running with a, a fiberglass filter, lets a little dirt and dust get by. And these fins get packed and they lose that cup. And when they get packed with dirt and they lose that cup, essentially it would be like taking a fan blade and taking the fan blades and just flattening them out. At some point, it's just a spinning disc. And that's what this is. Without those, those fins cupping the air, this is just a spinning disc. It loses its efficiency and it loses how much air it's gonna move. So now, if you're moving less air, of course, your static pressure is going to be low and your airflow is low. So you've got two problems creating a low airflow situation. So, <laughs> yeah, if, if you look at the blower wheel and it's caked, you, I, the only thing you can do is take it out, slide this off the blower, take a garden hose to it. I would suggest to find the, and I don't know where it is on this, the weight. You know, these are balanced. I would find the weight. I would clean right next to it. I would put two markers on each side of the weight, just in case as you're hosing it off, mowing it around, brushing it clean, you dislodge that weight. You can make sure it goes back in the right spot. 
Otherwise, you're in trouble. I had a guy two weeks ago ask me, hey, the weight came off. How do I know where to put it? I, I don't know how to do that. I don't have the piece of equipment that does that. I told him to buy a new wheel. It's the only way to make sure. Unless you can see the scrape marks of where that little weight was put on the fins, you're kind of stuck. The other situation, and I haven't thought about this until we ran across the, the plugged up secondary, and that was a, a very good catch on this guy. He knew he had airflow issues, checked his static, was thrown off by it. It led him to look other places. So we know that if the secondary heat exchanger is plugged up, you're going to have low static. If the blower wheel is all dirty, you're just not going to move enough air. The other thing I've seen, and I'll use a different color here, is insulation on the inside of the blower compartment came loose. Now this one baffled me. It was actually on one of my jobs where I checked everything out, put everything back together. I had airflow issues. I'm like, what is going on with this thing? I'd open it back up. I'm checking everything. It baffled me for a little bit until I realized that the insulation on the inside of the cabinet was unglued. And when the blower would kick on, it would swing over and block off half that blower. It was driving me nuts. So since then, I've also seen a heat exchanger fail where the insulation on the inside of the cabinet by the heat exchanger came off, rested right up against the heat exchanger. This side of the heat exchanger got so hot, it was literally a hole burnt through it. So again, your static pressure when you're testing, you're not going to know. If it's super, super low, that might be going on too. So you've got a couple things to look at. Please check out the video on testing external static pressure. And the next question I get a lot is when would you check for external static pressure? Well, nowadays, if the furnace I was replacing was in decent shape, I'd probably kick on the AC, put, test my static pressure with the old furnace to see if I've got issues. If I've got issues with the old furnace, chances are I'm going to have issues with the new furnace. The problem is putting in a new variable speed furnace, that thing's going to ramp up to try and overcompensate for that high static. So some of the things I might do if I was taking out a furnace that had high static, I would obviously, we're going to look at the A-coil either when we're replacing it, it's going to be good, or when we replace the furnace, we can crawl up underneath there and clean the A-coil. So that's a no-brainer. But more and more, contractors are putting furnaces up on six inch return boxes, taking off the bottom of the furnace, and instead of a 16 by filter rack, they're going with a 20 by. I don't care what, I don't care if it's a 75,000 three ton that you got. This is always a good idea. It'll get more airflow over to the other side, especially if the side that you, your filter on has the motor. Well, that motor takes up a good chunk of the space inside that blower wheel. So we know that air has to go around and get sucked in the other side. Why not make it easier? Bigger filter also allows you to go with a denser filter. So if somebody wants an allergen type filter, I don't recommend those, not, not in the one inch. Typically every ductwork I've ever seen is a little short on return. But if they're okay on return, adding square inches to that filter means you can go with a denser filter have more area, and it'd be the same as running a smaller filter that was more free uh, flowing. Hope some of this helps. Stay tuned for more. We're gonna do an actual, what different filters cause, uh, the effects they cause with static pressure. We're gonna do temp rise, hit the bell, hit the subscribe, check out the first static pressure testing video. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, have a great day.